after the success of The Lion King, Roger Allers really wanted to make another musical, but this time he wanted to make an animated musical set in Incan culture. So he decided to um, pitch it to then CEO of Disney um, um, back then, um, Michael Eisner, and he actually greenlit the project and he felt like it had all the elements of a classic Disney musical. And Roger Allers actually um, did recruit, did also recruit um, Sting to do the songs of the movie. And also, he wanted to. He um, actually had the working title of um, his next movie, that was going to be his next um, movie, The Kingdom of the Sun. And early production began in um, late 1994. And also, they did also in 1996. They did a research trip to Machu Picchu, and they wanted and they wanted. And there was going to be an, an Incan-themed version of Mark Twain's novel, The Prince and the Pauper. But there was a catch to this. Until um, Disney realized um, movies like um, Pocahontas and The Hunchback of Notre Dame didn't make, um, um, failed to receive the, um, the critical and financial backing, I meant to say backing to the public, so they decided to make it more a bit more comedic, so they decided to get Mark Dindle, who who did work at the company but left the company but but he um directed Cats Don't Dance so um they he they decided to bring him back to um Walt Disney Studios to um be um the co-director of um Kingdom of Sun but in nineteen ninety eight poor due to poor test screenings they um they um changed it to the movie that we all know. So yeah. Pull the lever, Kronk. Wrong lever why did we even have that lever in the first place? So yeah. So today, guys, I am going to be doing my re-review, or should I say, second re-review on The Emperor's New Groove. So yeah. Boom, baby! So yeah. So before I go, I'm going to say this. Cue the intro. Hey guys, this is it, and today I'm going to be doing my second re-review on this movie right now, today. So yeah, which I did remember I reviewed my first review on The Emperor's New Groove on, um, on, in um, April of um, 2018, and I did my um, second review on The Emperor's New Groove, which um, I did on um, January 29th of um, 2020, so yeah. And now I'm doing my third review on this movie, The Emperor's New Groove, which is my second re-review on this movie, on which is today on Friday, April 19th of 2024. So yeah. So yeah, guys. So without further ado, I meant to say guys. Um, so yeah, guys. So without further ado, I am going to be doing my um my second re-review on this movie right now, today. So yeah. So let's get started. So yeah. Hey guys, this is Evans Disney's animation film fanatic channel 24 here to take a spot, guys. And today I'm gonna be doing my second re-review on The Emperor's New Groove. Came in the year of 2000, so yeah. So yeah, guys, so I am going to read this plot on the internet, so yeah. So yeah, guys, I am gonna read this plot on the internet, so yeah. So basically what the plot's about an ignorant um young emperor Kuzco transformed into a llama by his power hungry advisor. Uh, the the devious Deva um, um, Isma standard in the jungle of standard in the jungle. I meant stand. I mean, I actually meant to say standard in the jungle. Well, um, Kuzco only a chance to get back home is to reclaim in in the high life rest with good with good hearted. Peasant Pacha together they must team up Cusco to to throne before before Isma tax to tax them down and finish them and finish him off. So yeah, so that's basically about the plots about about this movie. So yeah, so I did remember that this movie actually did come out did premiere at the um at the um e um e um 
EL um Ch EL Champion Feeder, and I know this movie is actually um an hour and eighteen minutes long, and I know that, yeah this movie is actually um seventy eight minutes long, and I know this movie has a one hundred million dollar budget, and also fun fact, and also this movie is also directed by Mark Dindal, and fun fact guys, didn't you know that, yeah even though this movie we 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 all know today, I mean, we do remember the comedy classic. As we know today, I mean, the, the, I mean, the Emperor's New Groove has always been recalled as one of the most funniest Disney movies ever, along with Aladdin. So yeah, and even yeah, like this movie wasn't that actually. This movie was originally not that actually. Also, fun fact: this movie was originally going to be a a musical, or should I say, a dramatic musical? So yeah, which I'm going to read this right, this description on Wikipedia or. On its Wikipedia page on the Empress New Groove right now, which I am going to be reading it right now. So yeah, following the theatrical release of um, *The Lion King*, Roger Allers called upon um, Thomas Schumacher, or I mean Thomas Schumacher's office, to discuss his next project. In his office, Schumacher explained that Disney's anime feature, Disney anime feature, was interested in exploring in, in exploring ancient cultures for for purposes film projects. He had free um he held free picture pictures res picture respectives in Inca uh including Xera which sorry I misspelled that name but that's okay. Um and even Meriden Miss and even um Roger Ours even Rogers um choose the Inca she, I I actually meant to say um, ours chose the um, the Incan culture as he became intrigued by the visual possibilities of Incan creation myths, as that um uh, uh, um I actually meant to say, sorry um, I kept stuttering so yeah but back on to the review so yeah, ours would be, um, um I actually meant to say ours. He was intrigued by the invis the impossibilities of uh, of um Inca creation myths, and also Alers would base his story on um on um on Anthony Hope's um adventure novel The Prisoner of Azza, and according to um Matthew uh, uh also in according to um Mike Matthew Jacobs, Jacobs uh, um. Ours informed the the idea of Kingdom of the Sun, which began development in nineteen ninety four. Or um, upon the, pinching the project to then CEO Michael Eisner, he recalled that he, he recalled that it had all the elements of a um, classic Disney e e film, and because of his directorial oh, success on um, The Lion King the same year, um, Ours um Eisner allowed Ours. To, to have free range of both casting and storyline. And also in 1995, and also in, in June, of, I meant to say in January of 1995, if, um, if King that same year, or um, Eisner allowed, um, I, I, I meant to say, um, Variety reported that Alice was working on a um, Inca themed original story in 1996, um, it's, um, they um, traveled to Machu Picchu in Peru to study the the Incan artifacts and architecture and landscape that this um, empire was created. And also, yeah, and also speak, and even Kingdom of the Sun was supposed to have a greedy, selfish emperor um, who, who, pe who finds a peasant who looks just like him, and the emperor swaps places with the present to explore his boring life to have fun, and as much as the the author Mark Twain's novel as the and also fun fact this movie was supposed to be a um a in an Incan themed version of Mark Twain's novel The Prince and the Pauper. So yeah, however the villainous this this witch, Yzma, summon, plans to summon Supe, the god of death, to destroy the sun so she can restore her youth and beauty forever. And, and 
so she insists um, that um, living in a world of darkness could prevent from her, from, I meant to say, prevent her from a um, of aging discovered, which discovering the switch between the um the prince and the present, uh, the 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 prince and the peasant, and um during his during his time as the emperor, or and doing um in um Isma's orders, is the pauper fails to fall in love with the the then. To fall in love, the pauper falls in love with the emperor's soon to be fiance Nina, uh, to who um thinks that he is the emperor who changed his ways. But when um when meanwhile um and the emperor Lama humanity in his new form would even fall in love with a llama a llama herder named Mina. Played by Laura Pretman, Laura Preppin. Together, the um the girl and the llama would would undo the um witch's plans and book. Do the witch's plans and was book the the real um said the film was supposed to be like a romantic comedy, a musical in a traditional Disney um style in Disney style, which after following the um underperformance of um the Hunchback of Notre Dame. I meant to say, following the um, underperformance box office, the underwhelming box office performance of Pocahontas and the Hunter Rockman Dom, the studio felt, oh, the executives felt like the project has grown too ambitious and serious to audience. And um, following test winnings and need more comedy, so they decided to actually bring in Mark Dindle to actually brighten up the mood. And even though he actually, um, fun fact, uh, um, Mark Dindle previously directed Cats Don't Dance, and, er, and, um, and, and, um, and Mark Dindle, and also, and also producer Randy Former contracted and offered, um, Mark Dindle, who previously wrapped up, um, Cats Don't Dance, to be the co-director of Kingdom of the Sun, and our, meanwhile, ours, personally called Sting to be the wake of the Elton John success of the Lion King soundtrack to compose several songs for the film, which he agreed to collaborate with his then um white filmmaker wife um Trilla Sting Singer to con to conduct um the progress of the production, which um which um she actually Fun fact, um, the, the, um, he actually, um, would call, um, Sting's wife to actually, um, make a documentary of the, the making of The Kingdom of the Sun, which he, which he agreed to, um, which the film, which was initially called The Sweat Box, which was made, which was never released, actually, which, yeah, and also, along in, with, with also, along with a collaborator, David Hartley, to, Compose um eight songs, of um in in cadre in um in linked in linked to the original plot and characters and also yeah, and also in the summer of nineteen ninety five um it was announced that hours and Dindo would be served as um the directors and Remy Fulmer would be the producers and also Oprah Kit was also oh, um and also um David Spade and Oprah Kit were compo were actually confirmed to be the voice of the the Emperor Manko and also the villainous um this um Wolf Isma, which um I know that um Coral Gorgino was also in was also in talks to play um Nina as well and also Farley Fierstein a um ten hundred um year year old rock um who um sharp eyed um the the um the emperors or some um, who who ruled before Manko. so yeah and even but in the uh, but things start to have a problem in um the summer of 1998 it has before it has become apparent that the kingdom of the sun wasn't far wasn't far along enough the production to be released in the summer 
of um, 2000 as planned, as this time the um, the executives were walked into former's office and and um, pacing in his thumb and finger um, a quarter um, an inch that an um, inch that your film is being close to being shut down. So yeah, fun fact. And also, um, until the production began to became into a standstill after the Disney executives after the test screenings of um the Kingdom of Sun, they weren't too happy how the movie turned out. So they actually approached Allers to inform to he needs to finish the movie. He needs to finish the film in time for its summer release to its some um, summer two thousand release date, which I'm the which I'm consumer products like McDonald's and Coca Cola and other companies were actually established and desperate to upon um to meet um to meeting that release date. From screenings things hours vision felt was recognized as having far too many um far too many elements and and Schumacher and and Peter Schneider smoked to um Mark Dindal and Rollins to um try to work out the piece of the film, which honestly yeah, and also they they also um made they wanted to make a more simplified version of a prince turning to a llama, which they that also became intact, but also the change in direction was in. With the the change in um, with the change on um April, I meant to say on um September, twenty third of nineteen ninety eight, the project became dominant of, dominant with the production costs of um, twenty five between um thirty million and also, and also twenty five percent, of animation have been that have been animated. Which honestly, yeah, and fun fact, I mean the animators that did work on um Tina Ma's son. And moved on to um animate um the Rhapsody in Blue segment for Fantasia Two Thousand, which yeah, and even um Mark Dindal actually, but in December even uh, a set of hours in the project he actually left the project so yeah, so Eisner actually gave Eisner actually he gave former um two weeks to salvage the project into the or production would. Would be completely shut down, but in December of nineteen eighty, um, former and um, and um, Dindo would halt the production for um, six months to retool the project, and also yeah, and renaming it to Kingdom in the Sun. So, which the first time that a Disney MA film had an overhaul since Pinocchio. Oh, and also yeah, I meant to say an executive overhaul, which also yeah. Even though they actually changed the entire story, which there are um, elements that were in, were still in the final film, like the Incan theming, um, the Incan theming, and also um, David Spade and Pacha, I meant David Spade and um, Eartha Kitt still were um, were um, in the cast, and even um, they even changing the El Elder moments, like they changed um, Inch Pacha. They changed the character of um. They can't. They changed the character of um. Um, I don't know his name actually, which. I they actually turned turn, turned um his um his character that character of that movie that looked like him that that looked like him to to a middle aged adult called Pacha. Which is, uh, and also, um, emperor, and also, um, also, um, isn't his assistant, um, Akua, uh, which, um, which be, which actually turned into a muscle bound, um, character with, um, with, Sorry guys, I'm I'm thinking right now. With um with with Kronk, which was voiced by Patrick Warburton, and also yeah, 
Even though, fun fact, the, the original ending was originally going to be, um, Kuzgo, um, um, actually, um, rebuilding, um, building his, um, his water park, but, um, Sting suggested that he would leave the project if he, um, if they actually use that ending, so they actually changed the ending in the movie, which is much better, so yeah. So yeah, guys, so, what do I think of this movie? I have to say... This is definitely one of Disney's most funniest movies ever. I mean, yeah, The Emperor's New Groove is definitely a comedy classic, which honestly, yeah. And also, fun fact, originally that, um, um, Sting wrote six songs of, the, of his original version, King of the Sun. And also, fun fact, originally, um, um, Kuzo's version was originally going to be called Manko, but they decided that they realized that they, um, actually realized Manko in Japanese it would have been a fitting name in the, the country, but not appropriate in front of the kids, so they decided to change it to Kuzco, but honestly, yeah. Even though, um, even though Skin, Skin was disappointed that the songs that he created for the original version actually didn't get into the final film, but he actually cooled down a bit, actually, which, yeah, which was good for him that he just stayed on the project, he, but the executive actually requested a song that would play in the, in the beginning and also the end of the film, actually, which... It's good that she, he actually um, stayed on the project, actually, which also, yeah, instead of, like, completely leaving the project, so, yeah. And also, yeah, I have to say, this is definitely a hilarious Disney movie, like, honestly, yeah. Like, I would say, let's talk about um, the cast of this movie, which I definitely thought David Spade as um, Kuzco was definitely really funny in this movie. Yeah, like, he has a lot of quotable lines in this movie. This is me, not this. Winner, loser. <laughs> That's really funny. And even his four full breaks were really funny as well. Like, yeah. And even that um line, boom, baby. Yeah, that's really great as well. And also I forgot to mention that um and due to um and also the title was changed to Emperor's New Groove, which also yeah, also Kingdom due to Kingdom of Sun's um extension extension, they um Disney rushed out dinosaur for its um summer release day of the summer of um two thousand, which yeah, fun fact. Also, yeah. And even um there's lots of quotable lines of him actually as well, and yeah, in he, yeah, even though the um the even though Cusco is really is really selfish, but he's really funny and really likable as well. Like yeah, and even um John Goodman as Pacha was definitely fantastic in this movie as well. I mean, in he even um even though in a year later he would voice um Sully in Monsters Incorporated, which yeah, which I thought he did fantastic um voicing that character as well. And even Irva Kit as Yzma was hilarious. Like, she has lots of quotable lines like, Pull the lever, Kronk! And she was like, Wrong lever! And says, Why did we have that lever? <laughs> that's really funny. And I'll say, Yeah. Yeah, that's really funny. <laughs> yeah. And even even Patrick Warburton as Kronk was hilarious. Like, he's, he has so much quotable lines like, Mission accomplished. And also, um, I have... I have 94 monkeys to go, which honestly, yeah, I thought Patrick Warburton's performance was fantastic and really hilarious at the exact same time, I know. I know that Patrick Warburton's a really popular actor, and he did a lot of voice work, actually, especially him and Family Guy as well, which honestly, yeah, and also, oh, yeah, like, there is a lot of talented cast in this movie as well, and also, yeah, and also, oh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's also a lot of hilarious lines in this movie, like, um, like, when, um, when there was a scene in the, in the movie where, um, Kuzgo and, um, Pacha were actually tied to a law, a, a, a big log, and they were, like, um, Pacha was, like, uh-oh, and Kuzgo was, like, don't tell me, we're out to over a huge raw wall, shot box at the bottom, bring it on, <laughs> that was really funny, actually, which also, yeah, also, fun fact, I mean, I know that Mark Dindle is also going to be directing this year with, um, his, um, with um, his Garfield movie this year. It's great to see him direct a movie after, um, he hasn't directed a movie in um, 19 years. I mean, the last time he directed a movie with um, Chicken Little, which honestly, yeah. And also, yeah. And even though, um, yeah. And also, there's also other quotable lines where Kong says, the peasant, the Donald, you have not pest tag, which only that's so really funny. Also, when, also, at the scene that they were, that, um, Pacha and, um, Kuzco were at, um, a, um, the restaurant actually and also yeah we're, we're also really funny as well and especially in the climax where we're fun we're um we're especially in the climax where 
in the movie where where um where Isma actually turns into a cat, which that was really funny actually. And yeah, like yeah, there's lots of funny scenes in this movie. So yeah. And now let's talk about the um the music and the score of this movie, which also um, which is actually composed by um, John Debney, which honestly his score of this movie is definitely fantastic. It still holds up 24 years later. It still is absolutely phenomenal and very fantastic at the exact same time. I mean, yeah. And also this movie is also produced by Randy Former as well. And uh, even um, the screenplay is also written by um, David Reynolds, who's also going to be um, writing the screenplay for the um, upcoming Garfield movie coming out. So yeah. And even even on the um, other um, um, act. Even the um, other scenes in the movie were definitely really great and really funny. So, yeah. And even though, yeah. I mean, no, this movie um, didn't do well at the box office, but it went on its initial release on um, December 15th of 2000. So, because Disney were heavily um, marketing, were too dependent on their marketing of um, 102 Dalmatians. But... But even though it didn't do well on, on theatrical release, but it did was a massive success when it came out on home media in May of two, uh, in May of two thousand one actually. Which yeah, and also yeah, and even though there was also another funny scene where um, where the the squirrel actually um creates a, um, a, um animal balloon and then pops it and then um he wakes all of the um, the pampers up. That was really funny actually. So yeah, and let's. Uh, let's go back into the score of John Debney's score of this movie, which honestly, I thought John Debney's score was absolutely phenomenal. It still holds up to this day, 24 years later, it still is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, enough said, so yeah. Or should I say, um, 23 and a half years later, so yeah. So yeah, guys, so now let's talk about the animation of this movie, which honestly, it still holds up to this day, 24 years, 23 and a half years old. It still looks absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I love the cartoony animation of this movie, which honestly, yeah. Or should I say 24 years that it still holds up? So yeah, which honestly, I love the animation. This movie It's definitely really cartoony and really amazing and and really funny as well. And yeah, this is definitely, I mean, overall enough said. So yeah, so overall, guys, I mean, this might be my longest review on my channel ever, but I don't care. So yeah, so overall, I have nothing else to say about this movie, The Emperor's New Groove. So yeah, guys, so, so yeah, guys, so if you haven't seen The Emperor's New Groove, where have you been? I recommend it. So yeah. It is streaming on Disney Plus. So yeah, guys. So I am going to give the Emperor's New Groove. Uh, I meant to say. Oh, I forgot to mention that um, the songs in the movie, like um, like um, Perfect World, were definitely great. And also my funny friend of me. And also the songs in the original version of um, like um, like um, in the original version of um, the Emperor's New Groove, uh, which was originally called Kingdom of the Sun. Like um, like um, Snuff Out the Light was really catchy. But yeah. Which, um, fun fact, he's my original had a, a villain so much. Also, yeah. And now it's on the video. So, yeah. So, yeah, guys. So, I am going to give um, Damper's New Groove a... Uh... 10 out of 10. Spectacular. So, yeah, guys. What do you think of my second re-review on the Emperor's New Groove? So, yeah. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe my channel. And make sure to like this video. So, yeah. So, stay tuned for uh, my short review on Self, which I'm going to be reviewing on April 23rd of this year, so stay with that, so yeah. And my final um, review of um, April of 2024 with um, Up on Poppy Hill, which I'm gonna be reviewing next Friday on April 26th of this year, so stay with that. And I will be doing my sneak peek for my reviews that I'm gonna be reviewing for it for May of 2024, so stay with that, so yeah. So yeah, guys, so before I end this video, I am gonna sing for you guys, so yeah, so yeah. See the light where the sky meets the sea, it calls me, and no one knows before it goes. If the wind in my sail on the sea stays behind me, one day I'll know how far I'll go. Remember me. Though I have to say goodbye, remember me. Who's your favorite fearless hero? Who's your favorite fearless 
Hero. This is our home. We got every generation. So for music, we have a own design. This is my family, a perfect constellation. So many stars, and everybody gets to shine. Whoa! And this and clear umbrella ones this show. Whoa! And every year, so many years ago. Whoa! And every year, our family runs things grow. And there's a lot you simply got to know. So welcome to the family, Madrigal. The home of the family, Madrigal. We're on our way through all those people. Are fantastic, cool, but magical. But I'm part of the family, Madrigal. I'm just Ken. Anywhere else I'd be attend. Is it my destiny to live in my life abroad? A chillity. I'm just Ken, anywhere else I see is a friend. Wouldn't it take for her to see the man be highlighted and fight for me? Okay guys, so I'll see you guys later. See you guys in my next review. So yeah, so I'll see you guys later and bye.